the United States, if you have a severe problem, you go to the Western doctor and, 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 that, and that's all you do. You go to the Western doctor. A lot of people don't recognize that. They can do different modalities at the same time. They don't necessarily interfere with each other. Why would you only want to do one thing when you have the availability of other things that you can continue to work with? I mean, me, if heaven forbid, if I were coming down with cancer, you don't think I'd be using my Chinese herbs? You're darn right. But you think I would consider Western medicine? Yeah, I definitely would consider Western medicine too. I mean, why restrict yourself to one thing? So when we're dealing with these um, so-called alternatives, and it's not just Chinese medicine, but it's the alternatives for various kinds of massage therapies or other therapies I know that are on this website that you have, why not include that into your thought process if that's able to help? In terms of Western medicine and Chinese medicine, we look at things differently. You know, you know, I don't want a patient that's got a 104 raging fever coming into my office. Go to the hospital. They can knock that. They can. They can knock that fever down in a heartbeat. You know, they can. They can really do some things. I can't do that. But when they can't figure out what caused that 104 degree fever. That's when you come and see me, because we have the insight into not just what it is, but how it evolved. I am a licensed acupuncturist of um, acupuncture, which is what the state designation is, is acupuncture, although I practice Chinese medicine. I am predominantly an herbalist. Um, herbs is the mainstay of Chinese medicine, not acupuncture. We'll talk a bit more about the acupuncture. My background, I was trained by Chinese doctors of Chinese medicine from China. They were professors of Chinese medicine in China came to the United States, opened a small school in New Mexico, where I went to, and I was trained by them. Um, and so all my teachers were virtually Chinese. I was trained as, as though I was in China. Um, I've been licensed for approximately 25 years in the state of Maryland. I was also a um, member <clears throat> of the Maryland Board of Acupuncture for eight years, and I was the chair of the Maryland Board of Acupuncture for four of those eight Oh. Um, so I've got a fairly extensive background, besides having trained with uh, doing a great deal of postgraduate work with one of the most renowned doctors of Chinese medicine in the English-speaking world. Uh, I've written more books on Chinese medicine and translated more books on Chinese medicine than any person on this planet. So I have an extensive background. Um, um, I predominantly do herbs, but I'm more than happy to about acupuncture. I, have, I still have acupuncture patients that come to see me. Um, oh, I absolutely would be interested in hearing more about the herbal practice. That's why, uh, well, you know, I, um, I, I was referred your way. That's how you, your name came across my plate was because of the, uh, the, the work you do in the herbal medicine. Yeah, um, uh, herbs, is, um, herbs is the foundation of the medicine. Um, herbs, herbs predates acupuncture by probably 1500 years. Acupuncture, if we're given it a best shot, is maybe 2000 years. Um, and a lot of times uh, the concept of acupuncture almost died out. If you go back 2000 years ago, um, first off, they didn't have a needle as thin as the little needles we use today. The best size needle they could come up with was something that's, that's about the size of a, of a paper clip. Just think about a paper clip being jammed into your body. Also, also consider, consider the concept of there was no sterilization, there was no concept of bacteria or virus or anything of that nature. So you're spreading disease amongst people. So there are actually quite a number of classic writings that say, do not do acupuncture, <laughs> um, which is interesting. Um, it, but it's, it hung around, and, and somewhere around the, the uh, 1200 uh, uh, A.D., CE um, is when um, a, a uh, emperor of China came along and said, well, let's take another look at this acupuncture. Meanwhile, herbs had been rolling along all this period of time. Um, and, and the greatest doctors of all Chinese medicine have all been herbalists. Um, you'll find that in, in throughout the writings of Chinese medicine. People ask me oftentimes, well, how does this acupuncture work? Well, it, it does a couple of different things. Um, it's good at clearing heat out of the body. Um, and you sit there and say, oh, what does that learn? 
what does that mean, clearing heat out of the body? What does heat have to do with anything? Well, we have this concept called qi, and qi by its nature is warming. We refer to, in the Western world, we refer to qi as an energetic. And if you have an energetic, therefore there must be some form of warmth or heat. And so when the energetic goes a little crazy, there's heat within the body. So think about when you don't feel well, one of the first things you do is you want to take uh, somebody's temperature. Do they have a fever? Well, that's what you're doing is you're, 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 you're trying to find out how much heat is within the body at that point. So acupuncture with the use of the needle actually can clear heat. It also moves that chi around, as, as I had mentioned earlier, that energetic process that flows through the body. It moves that chi around so that, so that um, if you have too much in one spot, you can move it from where it's too much to a spot where there's insufficiency. And, and if I put needles into the body, and these needles don't hurt, by the way. There's no pain involved. In them. They're very fine. Today, they're very fine needles. Um, and so if you put enough of these in the body, what you're doing is you're actually dissipating heat out of the body. This was written 2,000 years ago. Exactly how does acupuncture work? Nobody really knows. We have these channels. Some people refer to them as meridians. I prefer the term channel. I think it's a more exacting term. Um, but these, these channels that, that where the energetic flows through the body, that's what we're really needling. And, and, and we're, we're, it's, like, it's like opening and closing a gate. So when you pull, put a needle in there, it's kind of like opening the gate up. So you're allowing the flow to move. And that's one of the basic concepts of Chinese medicine. It's called free flow. And there's, there's, a, there's a, a basic statement in, in Chinese medicine that says, if there's pain, there's no free flow. If there's no free flow, there will be pain. So it's that free flow of qi and blood. So that's one of the reasons why Chinese uh, Ch acupuncture works well for muscular skeletal problems. Western medicine is, is without a doubt, a fantastic medicine. Uh, um, you know, um, it, it, it has its place, it, clearly. The problem is it's a glutton, taking up the place from, from everything else. Nobody else can come to the table um, because they are the end all, be all, whatever. Um, where where um, Western medicine excels is acute conditions. You know, um, if you have a, a, a serious disease um, and it's life threatening, clearly Western medicine is superior in that regard. Um, if you get if you get run over by a bus, the, 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 I think the the highest part of Western medicine is is their uh, a surgical techniques and surgery where they can put you back together you know it's great medicine I mean you, know, you can't do that Chinese medicine can't even get close to that so um, Western medicine excels in the acute kinds of disorders um, where Western medicine uh, um, falls down somewhat and is, is uh, doesn't have much capability is in the chronic disorders so, so um, and that's where Chinese medicine excels in, in chronic disorders. Um, so if you think about um, things of um, migraines, you know, well, Western medicine deals with migraines by numbing the heck out of you. So you're, you know, you just got to lie down. Oh, the pain might go away, but you're, 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 you're basically comatose for a while, non-functional. Um, think about diseases like, you know, they have no concept, they have no true concept or fibromyalgia, uh, or uh, they don't have a true concept, or um, Crohn's and colitis. I mean, they might be able to treat them on some level, but they really don't even know where they come from. Whereas in Chinese medicine, the, these chronic disorders, and that's what drives a lot of people to where I'm at, these chronic disorders, these are deep-seated internal disorders. Um, that's where Chinese medicine and Chinese herbs really excels. Um, so, uh, um, um, so I'm able to treat a lot of those things, uh, a lot of those, those, those difficult treat uh, uh, um, ongoing chronic disorders with Chinese herbs, sometimes with the combination of herbs and acupuncture, but quite most often with the herbs alone. Um, how do you go about it would, would, would really be the great question. You know, how does Chinese medicine go about it? 
Well, we deal with patterns. It's called pattern discrimination. Um, and so, um, so what we do is we don't, we're, we're, we are a disease-based medicine, but not the same way that there are diseases in Western medicine. So um, Western medicine, basically, if, you, if you're diagnosed and you have XYZ disease, you have XYZ treatment protocol. You know, one disease, one protocol. Well, in Chinese medicine, um, a, a good example of that would be in Chinese medicine, constipation is a disease. Okay. There, are about, there are about six different kinds of constipation. In Western medicine, you have constipation, they, they have one way of treating it, just eliminate the bowel. Done, finished. No, not in Chinese medicine, you haven't, re you've resolved a symptom, but you haven't resolved the disease it's going to come back over and over again so we have with we have within diseases we look at the various patterns that people present and it's the presentation of these patterns that we treat We're not treating the disease we treat the pattern that the patient presents to us in terms of western medicine and chinese medicine we look at things differently you know you know, I don't want a patient that's got a 104 raging fever coming into my office. Go to the hospital. They can knock that. They can. They can knock that fever down in a heartbeat. You know, they can. They can really do some things. I can't do that. But they can't figure out what caused that 104 degree fever. That's when you come and see me, because we have the insight into not just what it is, but how it evolved. Chinese medicine. So when I see people coming in. And, and I've had, and I don't treat cancer, but I've had people come in because what they want to do is support the chemotherapy or support the radiation therapy that they're going on, or just give supportive uh, aspect to what they're going to go through. And, and they're absolutely amazed that I can tell them almost exactly when their cancer starts. So yes. any, any large emotion in Chinese medicine will engender heat. And because the body is warm in its own nature. And so when you go and you get that uh, um, uh, CAT scan and they say, oh, you have a cancer, that CAT scan turned up red. That CAT scan is looking for heat signatures. That's what that red is. That's how they can identify it. Where did that heat come from is the question. And you're saying oftentimes it's from an emotion. Sure. Something big happened in a person's life. And they couldn't get it out of it. That emotion stayed there and just kept on making it bigger. So, in, in theory, actually, an emotion would affect a particular part of the body. Absolutely, most definitely. And that Chinese medicine is a holistic medicine, and Western medicine is not a holistic medicine. Western medicine looks at the body by bits and pieces. That's why you have doctor for your head, doctor for your eyes, doctor for your heart, doctor for your liver. Got doctors for everything. Yeah, I mean, I have a number of friends who, you know, they've had debilitating uh, pain and they go into an acupuncturist, some for the first time ever because that's their last resort. Or not last resort, but that's, yeah, they, they, they've taken that path. Yeah, they've already done the Ouija board before that, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the results are just, I mean, they, they went in limping and kind of hunched over and they walked out on their feet almost pain free. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a couple sessions, they are pain free. And you know, it's interesting to me. I mean, you, you said earlier that you know, how does it work? Well, people really don't know how it works, but it it does work. And so, why dismiss it? And I feel like you know, a lot of Western medicine, it's it's kind of understood how it works because it's chemical or it's it's a physical change or 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 whatever. And, and that's fine, it's, it's nice to have, it's nice to be able to wrap your head around something, but um, just because we don't understand something doesn't mean it should be dismissed as something that isn't helpful. It, it, may, it may even mean that our science hasn't evolved far enough. Um, I, I believe that to be true. So, so a lot of this, a lot of this um, has to deal with energetics of the body, and, and I think we are developing tools that are starting to see some of that but certainly i think we're scraping the surface and not, yeah, the, not much further in the energy the the energetics in 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 um in western medicine 
if they cannot measure it, it doesn't exist. Western medicine has to be able to, to um, uh, measure it on some level. And, and if it's not measurable, and unfortunately, chi is not measurable. Well, they, they don't know where the, the, you know, what keeps the heart beating? Where did the heart beat? What is that energetic that keeps it going? It doesn't quite exist in, in Western medicine. They don't know. They can talk about all kinds of systems, but started it. So, so. Well, and all of these other things that you, it's nice that you're seeing so many new, like modalities in hospitals, like uh, you know, um, uh, energy work, like like Reiki, for example, it's it's now just almost exploding in many different hospitals. Um, so it's nice to see that. I mean, it's just refreshing to have those methods that are becoming more common. I feel like the energy modalities or like the energetic. Uh, what would you call it? Well, let's just say Reiki to put a label on it. I feel like that is where acupuncture was like 20 years ago. Um, and it seems to be very effective and it's in more and more hospitals and it's becoming more, more, more and more accepted. And, you know, I, I know a little bit about it and people ask me like, how does it work? I'm like, who knows, who knows how it works, but you know, it does work. Right. It's very helpful. A lot of people, um, experience significant change, ex, uh, significant um, benefits from it, and it, it should be explored. and And that's what my webpage is about: is trying different things, being aware of different things, and exploring them for yourself, and not necessarily having other people saying what does work or doesn't work. It's it's totally up to. It's totally up to you. Sure. And, not, and not everything works for everybody. I mean, I've had, I, I've, I've had people that have come in and I've done acupuncture on them and eh, not so much. I've had other people uh, do acupuncture arm, as you mentioned, they come in. I've had people come in walking with a cane and, and walk out totally free of pain. Um, one, one treatment. Do I, do I say, well, yeah, well, I'm one, I'm, I'm, call me one treatment, Steve? No. <laughs> but, but I mean, that does happen, you know. Um, you know, so, so, uh, uh, and meanwhile, they've been to all kinds of doctors and everything. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you an example of a woman I've, I've been working with of late. Um, and I do both acupuncture and, and herbs on her, um, with her. Um, but she came in, her main complaint was that her tongue is on fire and she can't eat and, and it just burns constantly and, and it, 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 it's, it's driving her crazy. She's been to she's been to numerous doctors. She's been to numerous dentists. She's taken numerous kinds of drugs, and nobody can figure out why her tongue is on. And I gave her one herb, and then normally I don't do one herb. Normally I use multiple herbs. And and um, and her pain went away from her tongue. And she's she told me just the other day. Because I see her for some other things. She's 90 years old, for heaven's sakes. Um, and she's got all kinds of things going on with her. But, but she told me the other day, she says, she says, I cannot tell you how happy I am that I can now eat. And my, my tongue has, the fire is, is not there. And it's gone away. She says, I'm, I'm close to being a normal person again. Nice. Um, and she's not the first person that's come to me with a tongue on fire. Really? Absolutely. She's probably about the fourth one that's come to me with a tongue on fire over the years. And each one has been unique and different. And, and, and yet they've been to all the doctors and nobody could, nobody could put that fire out on the tongue because there's no room in their theory for it. You have to have room in the theory for it. But, but anyway, yeah. We, we do things that other people are not capable of doing. Now, you did mention about doctors coming to see me and yes. how, do, how do they feel about doctors and nurses coming to see me? Well, they've come to see me because they recognize the, 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 the uh, uh, inadequacy of the medicine that they use. They're smart enough to recognize that my medicine doesn't have all the answers and, and maybe I should try this over here. 
And these doctors, nurses, they're not giving up doing Western treatments. They're not saying I'm, I'm dissing the whole thing and, and dumping it. No, they're saying I'm adding this into my, my repertoire. I'm adding this into my health benefit. And so, and so they, they, um, they come to me and they've gotten better. I, I, had, um, I had one gentleman a number of years ago he was a um, anesthesiologist, and and he was a um, he was a uh, triathlete, okay. and he couldn't. And he had he had he had back pain, he had low back pain, and he said he came to me and he said he says I need help. And he actually sat he actually sat in the chair over there, and he was actually tears were running down his, his face because he says oh, I'll never be able to run and do everything I need to do. And he cried. I said well, wait a minute, we haven't even. We haven't even done anything yet. So why, why are you saying that? So, 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 um, and I said, well, you know, he said, well, he, he said, I, I've, I've seen all those surgeries. He said, I won't let those people operate on me. He said, I've seen what those surgeries do. <laughs> so I, I gave him, now this is one of those one treatment kind of things. I gave him one treatment. I did moxa on him, not just the needle, but I did moxa on him. And I gave him some herbs and he came back, I don't know, two or three days later. And, and he says to me, he said, yes, I'm 90% better. What are you going to do about the other 10%? Now, here was a guy that was crying that he's never <laughs> been able to do two days ago. <laughs> no respect, no respect. And I felt like saying, uh, you see that door? <laughs> I mean, and I've had many, many, many other, I can't say many other doctors, I've had quite a number of other doctors come in and I've been able to help them with what's going on with them um, and explain to them what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how it works and best as I can. And I like, I like doctors that are, are, are open-minded enough to say, you know, um, I agree. We don't have all the answers and I'm willing to look at something else. Yeah, I think uh, my, my big thing is, and I guess maybe this is changing, is that you just, outside of Western medicine, because that's where all the money is, and that's where, you know, all the advertising is, you, you don't hear of too much else. So people just aren't aware of other practices. And, well, I, you know, I think that's a shame. Well, what, they, what Western medicine has is they have a monopoly. Right. And as long as you have monopoly, you'll never, you're not going to go forward um, so well. Um, you're going to inhibit growth of things. Uh, um, there's a medical industrial complex. Um, you know, they have an institution that nobody, nothing else is truly allowed into that institution. So yeah, they, they give lip service to Reiki, and you can find an acupuncturist on somewhere in the hospital staff. Um, but they give lip service to it. They don't really thoroughly try to incorporate it in. Um, yes. So, 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 uh, and 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 here again, it's it's a it's a stepchild. When you're in the hospital setting, when you're in the institution, um, you, you don't have. You're, you're not sitting at the table. They're just pawning stuff off. You know, I've had doctors. I, I know of doctors that have pawned their patients off and and said basically said, well, uh, go, go do acupuncture. I understand that works sometimes. Why don't you go, go find an acupuncturist? I've had people come in with that, you know, only because it's, it's basically saying, I don't know what to do. Get out of my hair. Go someplace else for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and in actuality, that's, and it's, and it's always the chronic patient. That well, that's actually good. I mean, that's, that's, many doctors wouldn't do that. So yeah. the, the fact that even in frustration that they are like, you know what, you need to try something different. Get out of my hair and go see an acupuncture. Right. At least that's, that's good advice. It's basically, it's like, try something different. Try right. something new. 